Hello, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. And actually, um, you know, I'm a developer, and of course, I love uh, develop. I love to program computer. And actually, this is a real passion. In my uh, talk, I would like to uh, convince you, uh, first of all, that it's not so difficult to program a computer. So it can be very, very simple. Everyone can do that. And actually, that is a very, very creative process. So these are two my goals for my presentation. And I would like to start uh, a long time ago. We are talking about 1983, where my father bought me my first home computer. That was this one, the Texas Instruments T99 4 slash 4A. So this was the, the cool name of this uh, uh, home computer. And uh, actually was, uh, for me, an amazing moment because, uh, you know, I just plug uh, the home computer I connected with television because at that time there was no la real nice, you know, monitor like we have today. So that's why I dressed my glass because I basically started to, you know, in front, imagine in front of me, in front of my, you know, big television like that. So it was really terrible for my eyes. Anyway, uh, when I connected my home computer to the television, I got this. So this is basically the first screen that appears on, uh, you know, on, uh, on my eyes. And uh, I was, oh, what, what, what is this? Well, my reaction was very, very, you know, uh, strange. And actually, I, mm, you know, because this kind of um, computer, you don't have, uh, you know, graphics, uh, you don't have icon, window, nothing. Just, uh, you know, a blinking uh, cursor that wait, uh, okay, and now what I have to do? So basically, the, the computer was waiting to, you know, to insert some, you know, instructions, some common. And of course, I didn't know nothing about, uh, because I was nine years old, so imagine. And uh, there was a manual behind, uh, you know, the computer. And actually, uh, I've, this is my opinion, uh, we divide the world into two, two peoples. Who read the manual and who did not read the manual. I am the guy that read the manual, by the way. And actually, I started to read uh, the, the basic. Uh, book, so I started to understand how to, you know, uh, put instruction in uh, in the computer, and actually I got my first computer program that was the or everyone I'm uh, I know you are familiar the Hello World message. So I just send a program a computer to say, okay, I want to print a message on the on the screen, and uh, my reaction was like that because you know I was for me really incredible to understand how to communicate with a uh, non-computer was really, really uh, fascinating. So basically, I communicate with the computer and computer communicate with me. It was very, very uh, nice. And of course, video games. Come on, I was nine years old, so uh, the first things that I, I did with computer was just to play with, uh, with video games. And actually, this is one of the uh, first uh, video games that I played with the Texas Instrument. It is the Parsec. And it was a very, really, really, really nice um, video game, you know, about you know, wars, spy, uh, space, uh, galaxy, uh, and so on. And actually, uh, when I started to play with video games, I realized that basically there was uh, a real program. I mean, people developed this video game, and uh, I was able to, you know, to play with a computer. It was a really a fascinating for me. And. Uh, my, so the first question was how to program a computer to play a game was one of my you know uh, question that I started to to think about it and uh, you know uh, it uh, sounds like magic you know it's very difficult to uh, uh, especially uh, you know, uh, I was nine years old, years old so for me everything was like you know uh, magic basically. And actually, I started to play uh, with numbers and graphs. I can say pixel because you know, uh, or even sprites because this this was the uh, you know the, the terms that this um, computer uses to you know to manipulate the graphics on the screen and uh, to provide program uh, um, uh, a game like that. So basically, I uh, I discovered that computers are able to generate random numbers, and this is very strange to me. How how can a computer that is a very deterministic machine is able to pick up a random number? Take a moment to, to, to think about that. It's not so obvious. It's not so clear. Uh, in fact, I try to, you know, to look at the source code of the video game because you know, each, uh, uh, it was the time that basically you have to 
insert all the source code on your own computer so you are able to see to understand what's going on just you know reading the instruction that people provide you and actually this was uh, very amazing because I discovered that random numbers are basically just a mathematical formula are not real random in the sense that are deterministic so there is a, a mathematical formula that produces the number but uh, by the way now we have uh, the possibility to generate real random, random numbers with the last uh, uh, CPU of uh, uh, Intel for instance so if you got uh, the, this last uh, uh, computer you are able to generate a real random number because inside the CPU there is a special instruction to pick up uh, a random number but just to give you uh, uh, an idea what I'm talking about if uh, I just open uh, my computer and uh, um, for instance I just say okay I want uh, an infinite uh, uh, loop and I want to just print random number so with just one instruction I'm able to generate an infinite set of uh, random uh, random number so this is quite uh, uh, it's quite amazing of course if you want to to do something more uh, fascinating we can just add colors with the scales and we obtain you know an, an interesting uh, behavior J one just one line of code anyway I will talk uh, about this um, uh, later okay so another interesting things that I discovered just reading the source code of this game was the ability to to generate an infinite loop so in, this is very common in programming languages so you have a special instruction in all the languages to provide a loop so loop inside you know a set of numbers loop inside a pixel whatever and actually I provide very interesting just to loop providing the output of the results to get back to the input and looping again and again and again so this is a very interesting idea and actually, if you want to do a real uh, example, we can get, for instance, the Fibonacci series of numbers. This is actually a very, very simple uh, series of numbers. You start from zero, you, uh, from zero and one, and uh, you basically generate the other number with the sum of the previous two numbers. So we have uh, zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, and so on. So it's an infinite uh, series of numbers. And actually, uh, that's nice because here in Torino, there is a very nice, uh, 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 project based on the Fibonacci series of Mertz, the artist uh, uh, is Mertz, on the, um, um, on, the Mo on the Mole Antonelliana building. So uh, it's very nice because they put basically the series of numbers on the, on the Mole uh, Antonelliana. So this is just an example how you know you can play with numbers, you can play with loop uh, and it's very uh, and it's very exciting and actually I did uh, because I'm a, a programmer but I try to to do art with a lot of uh, you know aster uh, quotes um, using uh, uh, software so that's uh, is one of my project that I presented uh, uh, last uh, last year in an art exhibition so basically it's a simple iteration uh, so I provide a very simple uh, algorithm, not more complex that, uh, than the, 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 the example that I show you. And uh, actually I print a different pixel according, you know, with a simple rule. So I choose, uh, you know, a different color. Here is mostly uh, blue. And I provide this big, uh, big uh, picture. And actually it took me five, uh, the computer took five hours to generate the entire, because it was very, very big, uh, uh, the picture. So, uh, for, in my opinion, programming improves a lot the creativity and uh, also helps you to think out of the box. So, this is a very uh, famous example. So, if you, um, you have nine points like that, uh, the goal is to connect all the points with the four continuous lines. If you start to do, okay, okay, I start with this, I try this, this, three, four, mm, no, it's not good, uh, I try another one. So your mind is full of this problem is you think out of the box. So to go outside, you know, the limit that the shape uh, give you. And in this way, it's very simple to connect all the points with just uh, four lines. So this is a very famous example of thinking out of the box. Of course, in art, we have the same, uh, uh, we have a lot of example. I really like this uh, Guernica 
of uh, Pablo Picasso. This is an amazing e example how to think out of the box because here the, assets, the art, artist basically uh, proposed uh, the personal view about you know, a real uh, uh, events uh, with you know, different kind of uh, shapes and uh, and actually, this is a, a very nice quote that I really enjoy about uh, Pablo Picasso. Every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist when you grow up. So, child, peop, child kids are very creative. So, the, the real uh, challenge is to, is, is to act like, like a, a kid. So, in creative coding, basically, uh, you start from an idea. So, you have an idea. Imagine that you want to do something. You write some lines of code just to try to, you know, implement uh, uh, this idea. Uh, you play with the, this idea. You basically experiment with the idea, and you go again. So it's like, uh, you know, an infinite loop. So creativity is uh, an emerging experience, basically. Uh, especially in creative coding, you pass, you have a bottom-up approach. So basically, you start to play with things, and you go up to, you know, to refine, to discover. Uh, real, uh, um, uh, really good idea, or if the idea, were, the idea was good or not, and so on. So it's a bottom-up approach, basically. Of course, but uh, be behind software there are people. So this is very important. When uh, you think about a software, a piece of code, there are always people that you know try to to play with the uh, with the code. So it's very important to share the code between people. So it's very important to have an open source approach. With the software, so I really, I'm an open source contributor, so I really enjoy to see, you know, the code of other people, to you know, exchange idea, to propose improvement, uh, and so on. This is the only way to improve uh, the creativity. And if you think that uh, um, programming is not for everyone, you can have a look at this website, codeclub.org.uk. This is a, a non-profit association in the uh, UK. Basically, this uh, association teaches to program to kids. So it's very, very uh, fascinating. And here we have some, uh, some, uh, some example. And they use this open source project that is named Scratch. So it's a very simple program that is very easy to use because you don't have to write you know, code. You have just to play with uh, some you know, box like uh, Lego, for, and you put together and you play with this, uh, you know, uh, idea in order to, of course, create story, games, animation, uh, and so on. So, uh, creative coding is very related with the heart. I show you uh, uh, an example. But it's also related with generative art, software art, and uh, net art. These are all, you know, topics behind uh, you know, the idea of creative uh, coding. Here there is uh, an example of this uh, Yuri Vizhnivsky. Yes, thank you for uh, the pronunciation. <laughs> um, so this is uh, basically a website. There you can check it out. It's an interactive website, so it's very simple. So you be the idea is to uh, basically provide a way I don't know if you can listen to the music yes so uh, as you can see you can just move uh, 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 the mouse actually <laughs> you basically you can just move the mouse and draw you know uh, so this kind of uh, lines you can uh, change the color and there is a music in background that is according with the movement of the mouse change the music so it's very interactive I strongly suggest to, uh, to, to, to check it out. And I don't know if uh, now it will work also uh, the video, but these are two um, creative coders from Germany. These two guys basically try to capture the mover, the mover of a dancer inside the computer and uh, um, take this movement and apply to you know, different behavior, different shapes. I don't know if uh, the video now will, uh, will start. So basically, as you can see, they just capture the movement of a real dancer and they apply, you know, with this uh, algorithm, changing, you know, the shape uh, of, uh, you know, of the, of the dancer. 
this is, uh, of course, uh, just an example of uh, how can be creative to use, you know, uh, programming to do uh, to do something uh, um, uh, something uh, uh, creative. This is a, um, another example. Uh, this is about the software heart. So what you are uh, what you are uh, looking here is a, a, a program. So this is a piece of code, actually a piece of code. If you try to uh, put this uh, um, software, this uh, code inside a, a Linux uh, operating system, it will uh, completely crash, and maybe that's why my computer is uh, uh, broken, completely crash the computer, because the idea is basically here that this piece of code is uh, creating a copy, an infinite loop of copy of itself, so they will completely fill up the, the memory of the, the computer. And it's very elegant because, you know, it's written in this uh, uh, obscure uh, language that is the shell uh, of uh, uh, Linux. And uh, it's also nice because from an aesthetic point of view, it's, uh, it's, it's nice, I mean, uh, and imagine that you, the, this uh, software art was printed on a giant uh, uh, white uh, wall. So it was very, very fascinating to see in the New York exhibition. So it's a very famous example. Um, it's not working, okay. And actually, this is uh, um, the last uh, example that uh, I, I want to show you. Uh, this is a uh, uh, really early work of last year. They used uh, this, uh, a lot of people, um, Nick Mom from Casey Rizzi uh, and so on. Basically, they produce uh, um, uh, a book uh, that is uh, 10 print, the title uh, of the book. They use uh, the Commodore 64, so very old uh, uh, computer with only one line of code to be able to generate an infinite, uh, you know, maze. So if you try to uh, uh, run uh, um, this, uh, this program, because it's just one line uh, of code, you will obtain uh, an infinite, uh, an infinite uh, shape, an infinite maze. And uh, it's nice because, of course, they uh, also uh, explain uh, why they did this, uh, uh, why this is considered creative, uh, changing, you know, just uh, a couple of numbers in this one line of code, you are able to generate, uh, you know, very fascinating behaviors. So it's a way to, you know, to play with this kind of, uh, you know, uh, code in order to generate uh, uh, interesting and uh, uh, funny, I hope, uh, you know, project. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>